so this is very now finally very important i'm able to bring this back full circle like seriously bring this back full circle so we figured out that all of biodiversity such as humans plants and animals are made up of viruses which are parasites as well okay they're intelligent parasites but they're parasites so the microbiome and biodiversity is made up of viruses parasites protozoa proteins fungus and bacteria so that's the microbiome all right so the microbiome are all little community of organisms like little factions in a high school cafeteria you have the jocks you have the nerds you have the the socialites you have the goths that's kind of like your microbiome you have your viruses your parasites your protozoa your proteins your fungus and bacteria and they all have specific jobs specific strengths and they can get out of control okay I mean, you have the gangbangers, uh, you know, in the schools as well. That's part of the, the cafeteria. And if they get into a major fight and start a riot, they can cause major ruckus. No different than when you have candida. No different than when you have some kind of bacterial infection, viral infection. Infection says something is out of control. It is replicating very quickly. I'm going to turn the light on a little bit. Cancer disease and chronic illness says that there's something in your microbiome that's out of control, that is replicating very quickly, reproducing very quickly, trying to take over and usurping a lot of the resources in that one area and also trying to take over other areas of the body. Because yeah, you have them all over your body, but they can coagulate and they can group together if they're not under some kind of mediation. So when you think about the principal and all the security out of school, they're like salt. They mediate the environment to make sure that nothing gets too out of control. It's all balanced. Same thing when, let's say, um, like a jungle that's not near the ocean. You know why there's so many microbes and so much different viruses and you could say disease, but just different species of viruses, parasites, protozoa, proteins, fungus, and bacteria? Why the jungle has that? Because the jungle is full of fresh water. It's rain, there's sunlight, and there's no major amount of salt that's going to balance out the jungle. So when you go into a jungle, you're going to see, like you've seen, you can see all these little bugs crawling around, moss and lichen and, and uh, weird animals, new types of viruses or new types of bacteria, new types of amoebas eukaryotes, bacteria, eukaryotes, you know, protozoa, okay, paramecium, all right, so, and gerardia, all these different types of single-celled organisms are so prolific in any type of freshwater area that has a lot of sun, that doesn't have a lot of salt, or too much human, you know, mankind going in and mediating, so yeah, when you go into, like, the Congo, you're going to be hit with so many different species, well, when you go out there to the ocean, yeah, they have their own life forms, but it's not as prolific as if you go into a jungle that doesn't have the salt as a mediator. So when you think about a human who is on a low sodium diet, who has so many um, deficits in the body, they're full of parasites. You know, low sodium people are full of parasites. They're full of glitchy viral programming. They're full of bacteria and protozoa and proteins and fungus and and all this stuff that's like and so then they take their antifungals so they start killing the life they start getting their organs taken out or bypass surgery or taking all their medication to try to control the life or they take um different mrna programming to go and try to control the body to go and attack things in the body right trying to weaponize your own immune system against you and so, and so, and so you know that that's why people were seeing all these things come out of their body when they were doing the JJs because they had so much life in their body that should be there, but it was out of control. It was infection. And, but then people get so tunneled and they're like, oh, everything's about parasites. And so they're all tunneled about the parasites, but they forget about the, 
about the yeast and they forget about the, the bacteria and the viruses and the proteins and the, you know, all that stuff. So they've got everything else, but that, that, that parasite. And so they're all focuses on the parasites. And so people were very tunneled way back in 2017 in my old 60,000 person group, but they don't realize that their microbiome is more than just parasites. Their microbiome has the viruses and they're just as parasitic, but they're not bad. They're just the programming. They're the platform. They're the, the, um, the operating system. But if you have too many conflicting operating systems, then you have a screwed up device. Your body is a device full teeming of life. Okay. And so you have the viruses and the parasites are necessary. Now, too many of them where you're like leaking out worms like you see in the horror movies. No, you don't want to have a, vil a zillion parasites that you see in a body that's decomposing at the end of a person's life. No, you want to have a few in your body because it helps mediate and they're the ones that kind of put their finger in the air to test the chemical environment to make sure that they don't, you don't need any extra help to call their buddies. Okay? And so you have a few parasites. You have a few protozoa, amoeba, paramecium. You have yeast, which is fungus, which originally started this whole JJ protocol because everyone's more about candida and that's where I came from was the candida world. But there's more than just fungus and yeast. Okay? Fungus. So it's var viruses, parasites, protozoa, which is the paramecium, the you know, they're, they're the bacteria, the mediators. They break food down, feed on the sugar and the carbs and all that stuff. So viruses, parasites, protozoa, proteins. Proteins are the building blocks. They're from the amino acids. Make, they're basically the, the material that is used in a 3D printer building up that object, that device with a purpose and limitations. Okay? And then the fungus and the bacteria. The fungus, we know that's a messaging source and it connects everything in the system and it carries nutrients, but it also can get out of control. It also can overtake. That's called yeast infections. It's called infection, period, when something is out of control. Hey, sugar. And then you have the bacteria, which is like the lactobacilli. You get an acidophilus, you get in the JJ protocol, the, the probiotics. Okay, you have the bacteria. There's no bad bacteria, but when it's out of control, just like everything else, when a person is out of control, when a government is out of control, when a people are out of control, when your kids are out of control, they need a mediator. And low sodium diets, people who take all their vectors all the time, okay, for everything, not realizing that maybe in the beginning you need a vector to help you mediate the, the environment initially, but then you start feeding the food and the food supply. But people are on low sodium diets, taking their vectors and their therapeutics, squelching life. Yeah, you're going to end up either job of the jellyfish, totally just like this amorphous type of blob that is, really has no, no infrastructure anymore because you're just now turning, you know, you, there's nothing to you or there's something to you, but it's not organized, all chaotic. Or you can be the crypt keeper where there's nothing to you. That's my dog messing with the door. <laughs> okay? And so the JJ mentality helps with the, I'm going to bring a new term, the ionic and the covalent bonding. Ionic is plus and minus. Covalent is the coalescing. It is bringing forth the um, objects together through gravity and through positive and negative, the attraction, which is your body, and also bringing together the community of organisms called biodiversity and then the constituents of biodiversity is the microbiome, but then the microbiome is the viruses, the parasites, the protozoa, the proteins, the fungus, and bacteria, which can then be broken down into subatomic particles, but even more so into proteins. And then proteins can be broken down into subatomic particles. Then the subatomic particles can be broken down into little pieces of quarks. Okay? So everything can be broken down to the most minuscule, and everything can be... Um, I don't know, raised up to the most macro level, which is a human. But your base is your microbes. It is the community of organisms that you have no idea what, why they even are there. You don't even know they exist. All you know is the word infection and antibiotic and vector and was starving yourself and then all the operations and then go and be an activist against the, the vectors because you don't know that salt can neutralize other people's programming that's messing with your microbes. Salt is a mediator. Salt is a neutralizing force. Salt is a cure. 
That's why the system was after me back in 2018. That's why Dr. Phil did a number on me because he knew most of their clients knew nothing about the power of salt, addicted to the medical system, scared them with the symptoms. Oh yeah, brought on the soap opera drama of the two ladies and that one gentleman. He, he did a number on all those people because they were so ignorant to the fact that their body is a community of organisms. And they're, they're killing their body progressively with all of their belief systems and how they react to their cancer, disease, chronic illness, and autoimmune disorders. And so when I figured out the power of salt and the power of salt with the microbes, that it can be a catalyst to evolution and it can be a cure to infection. They had to do a freaking hit job. And they did a very good job. They put me through the freaking ringer. I'll tell you what. But I know it made me stronger. Another person now, they probably would have they would have folded. As soon as I, I mean, I saw it in the flat earth community. Not that I'm a flat earther, but a flat earther got major heat from a lot of people. And she just bowed out and said, I'm done. I, I can't deal with this pressure anymore. So some people are not made for this pressure, especially if they don't really know, especially if they don't really, like, they don't know deep intrinsically that they can prove that the earth is flat. So they back out because they realize it's not worth it anymore. But I, I stayed with the game because I knew what I had. I just needed to figure out all the information. Because even my trolls, even all the haters that I have right now, they want to freaking live. Yeah, they could be laughing and angry facing my shit, but I'll tell you what, they have the option. They have the option now when they didn't have the option before. They, they pulled out the option out of me. They forced me to tell them exactly what they were looking for. Now they're not going to admit that I was right because that would be like losing face on their end. But I'll tell you what, I hope they do the protocol. I hope they do a few resets and eat all the food in the food supply and deal with pain. Because, hey, you know, it's good to have a balancing force. It's good to motivate people in different ways. Not always just like, oh, hey, yeah, you're great. Sometimes it's like, hey, yeah, you're stupid. And the person's like, no, I'm not stupid. Let me prove it to you. So that's the other side of it. Not saying that we should be doing that all the time to kids because that could, can also be very detrimental to a child's growth by telling the kid that they're stupid. But as they get older, they have to be able to have a backbone to deal with people who are going to dispute them. And if someone disputes you, you better have the shit to back it up to fight your battles. If not, then you're going to back out very quickly because you know you don't have anything. And so that's what happens with a lot of people in the different um, conspiracy world is that when the heat gets too much, they, they, they can't prove all of their claims, so they back out. But I've proven my claims on an exponential level. And not only I prove it in academia and in science and physics and all that, but I prove it just by here, me, today. I'm still kicking. I've had the COVID several times freaking over, different variants, and I more than survived it. I thrived, and I got smarter from the, ver from the viruses because it's just data. And so if you're not getting smarter from the viruses and you keep destroying yourself with vectors and therapeutics and all that stuff, then, um, then yeah, you're going to have that perception that everything out there is to be feared. And I'll tell you, there's a huge perception that every people are afraid of everything. They're afraid of water. They're afraid of food. They're afraid of viruses. They're afraid of 5G. They're afraid of chemtrails. They're afraid of vectors. They're afraid of, uh, you name it. <laughs> they're afraid of their neighbor. But then there's fear versus mitigating risk. I know the risk sector. I'm not afraid of anyone. Believe me, if somebody comes up to me, I'll defend my honor. If anyone tries to hurt me, I'll defend my honor. But I'm not going to go out and look for a fight. And I go out and purposely antagonize people. If someone's messing with my world, I'll stand up for myself. And yeah, it's going to bring forth, you know, some nasty responses because people are not expecting someone to stand up for themselves if they never have in their life. But if someone, you know, so that's the thing. So, but I mitigate risk. I know the risks out there. People are freaking crazy and they're glitching and, and they don't know what to do with all this viral energy. So they, they act out. And so I don't want to be out there when alcohol triggers that or when drugs trigger that or when who knows what triggers someone to act out. So I stay home, stay safe cultivate my brain, make sure my dog is taken care of, make sure my husband is relatively safe and drop seeds for him so he can stay alive because he's my best investment. I'm his best investment. We've got, we both got where we are today by helping each other. And that's all I really give a shit about. I give a shit about you guys too, but you all have to choose to give a shit about yourselves. If you give a shit about yourselves, let me tell you, I will give a shit about you. But if you don't give a shit about yourself, then I have no reason to give a shit about you because you don't give a shit about yourself. So, you know, it works. That's how shit works. It sucks when you give a shit about other people who don't give a shit about themselves, and then you're wasting that energy. 
So when you find people that actually care about themselves and they want to take care of themselves, well, then you give them the, the strongest platform you can. So that way they're not working from a deficit that even though, yes, I am helping them, it doesn't mean that I'm doing the protocol for anyone. It just means that now you have all the tools in the toolbox that you can finally use and understand this is not, you know, blindly following me because I sound good. I substantiate everything with science. The desert has hardly any microbes. You know why? Because there's hardly any fucking water. <laughs> okay? But when you go to a jungle with rain, you're going to get the life and the microbes. But if you add ocean to it, then it's going to be something like the ocean, like the beach. Everyone loves the beach because your microbes calm down. No one likes going into a jungle because the microbes are like, oh, there's all of our cousins. We got to have a, a reunion. <laughs> I mean, that's seriously how it works. You go into a jungle, it's like a reunion for all the microbes in your body. They're out of control. <laughs> and then you have to go get vectors when they go into some places like, you know, the Congo or, or Africa or something. Because there's so many microbes in, in jungles, in freshwater jungles. And so the ocean is what everyone loves the ocean because salt is the mediating force. Everyone likes to do a little few resets with the J juice. It calms down the wars within and then it releases. And then, yes, you're going to have to deal with, with 3D printing your body with the food supply. And it's painful. All right, bye.